Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news and trends and innovations from thought leaders within the digital infrastructure industry. I'm Dean Perrine, EVP at JSA, and we are coming to you live from one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my life, Honolulu, Hawaii at PTC 2025. And I am here with Paul Wiltshire. Paul is the VP of Sales at Atlas Edge. Paul, welcome to JSA TV. Uh, great, great to be here, Dean. And as you said, beautiful, beautiful Hawaii is much warmer than it is back in the UK at the moment where it's freezing. <laughs> I'm from Chicago. It's two degrees there right now. Two degrees. That's uh, much, much, much better here, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. My wife is very jealous. <laughs> yeah, mine is actually in the hotel right now, who is flying back tonight. Uh, so uh, she'll be warming up the home for me before, yeah, okay. I, before I get there. But look, uh, Atlas Edge is at the forefront of edge um, computing solutions. Um, but that comes with some challenges, right? Scaling challenges, et cetera. Why don't you tell our viewers how Atlas Edge is addressing those, those uh, computing challenges? Yeah, thank you for that, Dean. Uh, Atlas Edge is uh, a company where we're operating a pan-European data center company across Europe. Mm -hmm. Where we see the growth uh, coming is not in the traditional marketplaces, uh, of the flat D infrastructure, Frankfurt, mm -hmm. London, Amsterdam, Paris. But what Atlas Edge is focusing on is the next level of regional cities, building the data centers in places like Lisbon, mm -hmm. Vienna, um, in the DAX region with places like Hamburg, Berlin, Stuttgart, mm -hmm. where we're seeing a lot of demand in there and, and building that infrastructure in underserved markets to be able to support both enterprises and hyperscalers, put their compute power where customers need it and be localized to them. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like Atlas Ads kind of has its finger on kind of the uh, pulse of some of the trends and and, and, and what works best and, and going uh, where you're needed most. Absolutely. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about those trends. You know, what, what, are, what are you seeing as far as uh, the computing trends? Uh, we're seeing the uh, the hyperscalers serve more more companies, uh, both public and enterprise sector, mm -hmm. in those reg regional mm -hmm. marketplaces. That's been driven by GDPR, latency, um, and just a lack of availability of power in those bigger locations. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that we see from an enterprise perspective, we still see a lot of on-prem to off-prem mm -hmm. yeah, being done, especially post-COVID with people closing buildings that they don't need as those leases. Yeah. And also we're seeing that companies look uh, in the enterprise world, making sure they have the right mix of public and private computing to mm -hmm. allow them to have hybrid infrastructure a little bit of cloud repatriation, but trying to right size mm -hmm. their infrastructure. They also want that private infrastructure localized to them so they can service and support that. Yeah, and again, yeah, with GDPR, with the latency, yeah. uh, being able yeah, yeah. to provide those hyper, uh, hyper areas. We're also seeing, especially in somewhere like Lisbon, the new subsea cables like to Africa coming in there, bringing that connectivity and internet mm -hmm. traffic from the Western side of Africa and from uh, South America and seeing that really be in a new hub point, a bit like Marseille yeah. has been, yeah, coming up as a really uh, exciting marketplace for the data center and telecommunications industry serving that, that Africa business. Yeah. Um, so lots, lots going on, on on the business side for Atlas Edge. Let's talk about the impact of what that business is. Um, you can't you can't do a JSA TV without us talking a bit about sustainability That's and a couple right. of other things, AI, but we're going to get there. Um, but why don't you tell us a little bit about um, some of the things that Atlas Edge is doing as kind of a conscientious player in the industry with regard to sustainability? Well, first, first of all, we all recognize that, that green and the environment and corporate and social responsibility yeah, is really, really important to everybody. So we already use 100% green energy on all our data centers. What we're also seeing in Europe, maybe not in some of the other marketplaces, is lots of legislation coming. Mm -hmm. So uh, by 2030, all data centers in Europe have to operate at a PUE of less than 1.2. So all of our designs yeah. now are basically driving, making sure that that PUE is below 1.2. And also the existing data centers, we're doing a lot of infrastructure upgrades so mm -hmm. we can drive those efficiencies. Um, and anything that we can do to help that in terms of whether it's just simple things like lighting in the data centers, yeah. replacing all the old equipment. But we need to we need as an industry and we've got a little reputation of using lots and lots of electricity. And we <laughs> a little to, bit of a reputation, yeah, right? And we need to yeah. show, obviously, to uh, for the protecting the world and for our future, my daughter, etc. And mine, yes. Yeah, it's making sure that we're doing this in the right way. So yeah. we're fully on it. Um, we've got a lot of legislation to do, which is helping drive mm -hmm. Europe and drive mm -hmm. the data center marketplaces there. 
but we have to do it and it is the future of the planet. I love it. Um, and we cannot talk about sustainability and we cannot talk about the challenges around sustainability without talking about the challenges of AI application deployment um, and, and the challenges it creates with regard to sustainability. So let's talk a little bit about Atlas Edge's AI initiatives um, and, and how that plays into your sustainability. Well, in, in Europe, what we're seeing is really two trends. First of all, the uh, the training AI is tending to go into the Nordics region, mm -hmm. yeah, or into the Iberian Peninsula because of the cost of energy. Yeah, in Norway, Sweden, etc., it's mm -hmm. cheap because they've got a lot of uh, renewable energy in yeah. there through hydro. Or in the Iberian Peninsula, they've got a lot of sunshine. Yeah, so they tend to be cheap at the moment. So what we're seeing is the the training deployments in Europe, typically being in those countries. Mm -hmm. However, as training moves into influencing, we're seeing that influencing then come into the regions. And that's being driven really by GDPR to ensure mm -hmm. that those AI influencing are in those localized countries. So we're, seeing a, we're now starting to see the demand driven by in Germany and the UK for those regionalized um, AI influencing happening. It is a challenge for the data center marketplace yeah. because for the last 20 years, we've built the data centers around air cooling mm -hmm. and low density racks. And yeah. the demand we're seeing these days driven by the need for GPUs is making sure that our data centers can support low density air, high density air and, and liquid liquid cooling. Yeah. And with a two and a half year cycle to go from starting a data center to actually making it <laughs> operational, then, then that's a challenge for everybody. But here at Atlas Edge, we have plans for our existing sites yeah. to be able to support that liquid cooling and the sites that we're building in Lisbon and Vienna and in Germany, yeah, they're all being designed to be able to support both air-cooled and liquid-cooled um, as custom demand drives that infrastructure. But it's an exciting, uh, it's an exciting area of AI, and again, I'm sure we'll see more regulation coming into that to make sure it's used yeah. in in positively for everybody right. moving yeah. forward. Yeah. Um, Paul, I know you have a busy schedule. Um, I feel like I could probably speak to you for the rest of the day. Um, unfortunately, neither one of us have that kind of time, but so thank you very much for being with uh, with us on uh, JSA TV. We appreciate you being uh, here. Thoroughly enjoyed it, Dean, and have a, a, a great rest of the time here at the conference. You do the same. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon.